Hey, welcome back Design Squad. This is episode two in how to create a design system in Sketch. And right off the bat, if you haven't watched episode one, go back and watch episode one because it's important that you go through. There's gonna be only 10 episodes or so in this series, in this mini series of how to create a design system for a specific product. And so I'm gonna leave the URL to actual playlist for this mini series down below. And so go back and check it out and, and then go episode by episode if you actually wanna learn about design systems and how to get started just using Sketch within your small team of designers. And so as I go through, I'm gonna talk to you about the most tangible bits I can think of. And right now is how I'm gonna structure the files. So at the moment I have one Sketch file which is Design Systems MS Teams version zero, which you can see on my screen and it's empty. As you can see, it's one page. And just for a reference, I copied in this image of uh, Brad Frost's atomic design principles and the flow from atoms to pages. So I, I, I'll tell you how we structure a sketch file later on based on this. And the next file, the actual sketch file for Microsoft Teams, which is structured pretty well right now. And imagine that we got user tested this landing screen for Microsoft Teams in a specific channel. Everyone is happy, commercial, it's viable, it's feasible to achieve this. Well, now is the time to update our design systems or start design systems. Let's say we didn't have it in the first place. And so I have two different sketch files. I'm always going to refer back and forth, but I'm going to keep it separate for now. And so I have MS template with the actual assets. And then I have a file which where the actual design system is gonna reside. And then imagine once we are done with this design system, then I can push it to different teammates and they can reuse it in their designs and then experiment and then push it back and then we can update and collaborate it that way. So now once that's clear, let's go ahead and structure our design system sketch file into pages, which we are definitely gonna be required. Go ahead and create a page per each of these segments. So let's say number one is atoms and you can follow through if you're actually following this and molecules, I'm gonna have a session per each of these so you know exactly why we're doing what and then refer back. Once that's done and I have a simple structure, as you can see, I don't really need this anymore. You know exactly what I'm gonna mean in each of these. All you need to do is add one additional bit, which is experimental. And I'm gonna talk to you exactly what I mean by experimental or you can call it lab maybe or something like that. I, it's, it's up to you. But that's basically where you are gonna experiment with your new patterns and where you can actually design things within the design system before you push it into atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and so forth. If I'm a designer and I'm just starting out on a new type of interface, let's say this is it, this is my canvas where I'm gonna keep my patterns and things of that nature. And I'm gonna call it experiment one. So that's where I'm gonna start putting all the patterns. And once I'm happy with it, I can push it into atoms, molecules, organisms, template. What I like to do before I establish the design system, make headers to the thing. So it's up to you how you want to make it. It could be just a tag like this, but you know exactly what it is for each of the planes of the artboards, which you're gonna use within specific pages. And so immediately I created a tag, which I'm gonna use for all the items, all the artboards within atoms. And then we're gonna create molecules, organisms, templates, pages, and lab as well. So all I have to do is just really quickly create a symbol and again, you don't really have to do this, but I like to have tags for each of my bits. So let's say tag atom, like so. And then I can go to newly created symbols thing. And here just replicate that and call that a molecule and then just make a visual identity for molecule. Boom. And the last bit, all I need to create is just one for the labs. And then I'm gonna have a symbol for each of those tiny pillars. Boom. And so this is my visual identity for my design system before I even approach the component extraction, deconstruction, putting into the actual, you know, populating the design system. Let me just show you why I created these immediately. In every page, we're gonna have multiple artboards. 
basically in every this sketch phase because we are going to need multiple pages to experiment on multiple atom pages for example for typography colors other different quarks and bits and whatever which we are going to extract from mockups and branding guidelines in molecules we're going to have multiple different components which could be menu artboards which which could be button artboards and so forth you know a lot of different bits templates and pages and you know even more artboards and so it's good to indicate for anyone who's new to your design system or who's navigating where they are at and i find it to be very intuitive when you land on your labs like this and you can immediately see that this page is a labs for x and just to show you how i would use it maybe it's experiment for experiment for new drop down elements or something like that and I'm gonna have a consistent style within design system so that my design system has its own design systems in a meta way. So this is my experiment page, but I really just need to copy and paste across and just replace the, the tag with pages. So this is an artboard for a page. I can copy it into templates. And now you can see we're adding a structure and the structure is really important for design systems so that we can start somewhere and we actually can have solid guidelines to where we need to start populating different bits. And then it's gonna be much easier for whoever picks it up later. Boom, and that's almost it. The last bit what I wanna do before we jump into every single bits of these and start rolling out our design system and working on it is to introduce MS Teams page, which I created from scratch. But what I want to show you is that until we pre-populate it and update our design systems, everything is gonna go to experimental labs environment. That's one way to do it. You don't really have to, but all that thing I had here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy. As you can see, my tag is a bit too small. I'll need to readjust it, but you get the drill basically. This is where we start. We start from experiments and then we populate all those different bits. Of course, you can push the labs as a first page if you want to as a zero up there. So I hope it was useful for now. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Check the link down below for that playlist bookmark it. Subscribe to the channel so you know exactly when the new episodes come out. Depending on when you watch this, it could be in the future or it could be already came out back in the day. And so you can watch all of them from the playlist down below. And so on that note, I'll see you in the next episode.